Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I trust you are all well. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, for the next 30 minutes, uh, I shall present key findings, issues, insights, and recommendations uh, covered in the study entitled Answering Critical Questions on Mining in the Field. Uh, this is the second phase of the study, and it focuses on the small-scale mining sector. Uh, the study was conducted under the supervision of Dr. Sonny Domingo as project manager and Arvi Manehar of the IDA. Both are also co-authors to the paper. Now, here on, herein are the objectives of the study uh, to assess current policy landscape on small-scale mining operations in the Philippines, uh, to conduct uh, industry analysis and look into the contributions of small-scale mining operators uh, to address critical issues uh, being raised as regards to small-scale mining operations in the country and uh, provide recommendations on possible policy augmentation and implementation arrangements to improve the current situation. Now, wh while we have uh, attempted to provide recommendations on possible policy augmentations, uh, these are not as comprehensive nor uh, in detail as we have wanted this to be uh, due to lack of more accurate data on the sector. Uh, this is very ironic, uh, really, uh, because this sector has been the subject of various uh, and countless uh, even uh, research studies in the past. These limitations are in turn caused by the continued prevalence of informality in the sector. Okay, so for context, uh, let's define uh, small-scale mining first, as it is defined uh, in the Republic Act uh, number 7076, or the People's Small-Scale Mining Act of 1991. To quote, small-scale mining uh, refers to mining activities which rely heavily on manual labor using simple implements and methods and do not use explosives or heavy mining equipment. Now, this definition can be considered uh, identical to the definitions established by other countries and international government organizations. But the variations are on the processes by which uh, each country writes, decrees, implements its regulations toward the small-scale mining sector. And it is important that such uh, definitions also are made to mark a delineation between large-scale and artisanal or small-scale mining. Now, uh, whilst uh, having such delineations in our law, the Philippines is one of the, those countries uh, observed by the OECD, or Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, noting that uh, countries that have specific legal provisions for artisanal and or small-scale mining sometimes encounter uh, problems uh, with miners uh, trying to define their operations as small-scale or even artisanal in order to avoid having to comply with stronger mining regulations. Well, indeed, uh, many small-scale mining operations in the Philippines uh, can pass as a uh, large-scale operation. Now, the motivations why anybody uh, will be involved in small-scale mining activities uh, ranges from poverty or just making a living uh, to entrepreneurial or making a profit. Uh, considering that small-scale mining is both ideological and economic opportunity. The study, as it was said, uh, follows the same logic, uh, logical flow of thought when developing industry roadmap or strategy. Uh, it attempts to answer the critical questions of where are we now, where do we need to go, and how do we get there? The outline of this presentation, therefore, will discuss the following. Uh, to answer the question, uh, where are we now? We shall present the uh, status of small-scale mining in the country, its costs and benefits, and key issues. Then to answer the question, where do we need to go? We shall present proposed activities for policy augmentation, policy implementation and enforcement, and imposition of regulatory bottom. Now, the third, and finally, to answer the question, how do we get there? We shall briefly introduce the recommendations to formulate national research plans, roadmaps, 
and manage eventual implementation. Now let, let us start with the current policy landscape. So in general, the government as manifested by the last seven administrations, including the incumbent, acknowledges the potential of economic contributions of small scale mining activities and does consider the activities worthy to be supported and thus it needs to be formalized and regulated. Uh, the Philippine uh, government has created more than 11 national laws or republic acts that uh, either directly or indirectly promote, develop, and improve the performance and regulation of small-scale mining operations in the country. Uh, the Philippines also is a signatory to uh, several international agreements improving working standards in artisanal or small-scale mining, such as the Convention of the Rights of the Child in 1990 and the Minamata Convention of Conmetry in 2013. Uh, the implementers of these laws are the DNR, uh, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, through the MGD, uh, by virtue of the of DNR Department Administrative Order 2015-03, which is the implementing rules and regulations of the Small Scale Mining Act of 1991. The local government units, by virtue of the Public Act 7160, or the Local Government Code of 1992, and the Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Now, in attempting to quantify how many workers are involved in small scale mining activities, we can cite figures from previous studies. Uh, both the government units and the mines and their scientific bureau do have their own uh, figures. Apparently, estimates vary widely. Number of small scale operations uh, reaches over 3,000 groups, while total workers are uh, reaching 500,000. Uh, certainly, if considering the number of people dependent on small scale mining, uh, these figures in increased by a certain multiplier. Uh, that number is estimated to be four at the moment. Uh, the regions, uh, no, in one region's uh, 2017 inventory of small scale mining operation, uh, it shows that 3% uh, are female workers and 6% are considered as child labor. Around 80% of the total number of small-scale mining operations are unregistered. Now, this is a graph uh, showing uh, compiled data from the Mines and Jail Sciences Bureau, the uh, Banco Central of Filipinas, and the Hong Kong Census Statistics Department. Uh, we need to use uh, the harmonized system code of 710812 for gold non monetary either in bullion or dore. Actual grades, however, need to be confirmed with the Hong Kong government. It shows that in 2018, uh, around 99 tons did not come from large scale mining operations, nor was sold by the BSP. Uh, these are imports going to Hong Kong. Uh, hence, uh, we may deduce that the difference came from sources uh, undetected by our local customs. Uh, this is where the government needs to be able to correct such uh, apparent leakage. We can uh, justify later on uh, that most of this may come from small scale mining activity. The study also showed that. The Mines and Geosciences Bureau can uh, or does have a reliable database of small scale mining operations. Uh, one region uh, was uh, their findings that there are more mineral processing operations than mining operations at a ratio of three, three mineral processing plants per one mining operation. Another finding is that more than 90% of existing large-scale mining or exploration, no, 90% uh, of existing uh, small-scale mining operations are 
uh, within large scale mining uh, or exploration thing. Uh, these are very good data sets that can be analyzed per region. Uh, full transparency uh, and availability of data uh, critical to developing the industry sector is obviously hampered. Uh, for one, by, by the continued uh, pervasiveness of informality in the sector. Uh, since the enactment of the Small Scale Mining Act in 1991 and up to August 2019, uh, during which our data gathering uh, activities uh, ceased, uh, that is about 28 years. And in that 28 years, there were only 17 million Bayan areas to clear. All small-scale mining operations outside of these areas are considered illegal. Out of the approximately 3,300 small-scale mining operations, less than 23% are registered, and only less than 0.8% or 17 can legally operate. Still on the status of small-scale mining, uh, an industry analysis of the sector needs to have a stakeholder. Uh, since unlike a pure private undertaking, a small-scale mining operation may be akin to a government social project. Uh, we need to understand uh, the variety of stakeholders that have interest in the project, identify needs, manage expectations, and assess how this needs to how these needs can be uh, supplied by the small-scale mining project or projects are being developed. There can be several ways to assess uh, those needs and or influence level of stakeholders of projects. Uh, this slide uh, presents the degree of influence of each stakeholder uh, to policies and the welfare of the small-scale mining worker. Uh, please note that such analysis may vary per project, per community, per province, or per region. Similar analysis has direct application in identifying key influencers for certain development uh, initiatives. Now, coupling uh, or transposing such stakeholder analysis uh, with a value chain analysis can help identify specific areas where certain small scale mining projects will require support and from whom and from what dating agency. Uh, this slide shows a value chain of a legal small scale mining project with key stakeholders and which can, be, uh, can vary depending on the unique context per project per barangay, per municipality, per province and region, or, or region. Now, similarly, this can be done uh, when trying to implement formalization or legalization programs, attracting or convincing unregistered or informal uh, small-scale mining groups by being able to identify which value chain activity or set of activities for a specific project lacks support. Still, in attempting to find a better ways to develop the sector, operating models or templates need to be identified. Now, we have identified three categories which can describe operating models of small-scale mining operations. Now, in terms of structure, uh, small-scale mining operation can either be uh, subsistence mining or for survival only, uh, can be a financial operator, can be a financial operator and buyer, and it can be only an independent entrepreneurial miner. Now, in terms of tenurial setup, uh, the SSM operation can either be uh, small-scale mining operations under large-scale mining tenements, small-scale mining under mining patents, small-scale mining under no-go zones or protected areas, and we have the legal 
small scale mining operation, which is within nationally declared Minan Bayan area. Now, in terms of operations within Minan Bayan area, since a Minan Bayan area needs to be reviewed and declared by the DNR secretary prior to being uh, declared, we can describe the Minan Bayan area as either locally declared, which falls short of being national declared, which technically may still be may still render the small scale mining operation in such, such areas legal. And we have the nationally declared Minambayan area, which has been reviewed and formally cleared by the DNR survey. On the next on the next two slides are a list of benefits and costs of small scale mining operations. Now, the lists are categorized by social, economic, environmental, and technical aspects. Obviously, the lists are not as comprehensive as can be, and such lists can certainly be expounded to even include targets. When applied uh, per individual project area and compared with such targets, uh, we, can, we can see gaps. Uh, and improvement opportunities can emerge. Now, the existence of improvement opportunities in, in this slider are shown in red font. Now, here is the, the cost slide. Now, the cost of small scale mining operations agreeably, agreeably all costs represent improvement opportunities. Now, the, the past slides uh, presented compressed versions of sections on the status, status of small-scale mining in the Philippines. But basing on an analysis on findings of the entire study, we can summarize issues uh, as follows. Structures on, on nature of small-scale mining. Uh, in this issue, uh, one example is the almost non-existence of efforts on the, on the ground by regulators to put pressure to regulate the actors who illegally gain the most from SSM operations. Uh, these are the financiers and the black market players. Issue number two, uh, monitoring and enforcement. This is about capacity or capability issue where enforcement capability is not institutionalized to be rolled off on a routine and regular basis. And it still takes a task force to do it. Issue number three, uh, metallics versus non-metallic. This issue is uh, about treating small-scale mining of select non-metallic minerals as not covered by the Public Act 7076 that restricts mining uh, activities within declared Minan Bayan area. Issue number four, policy overlaps and policy actions. Policy overlaps uh, concerns conflicts with uh, Republic Act 7160 or the local government code. There's still a lot of confusion uh, uh, in that area. LGU autonomy, consent, and oversight. Now, this issue concerns constitutional guarantees of autonomy of LGU, uh, despite clarifications from the Supreme Court that the constitutional guarantee for autonomy only means administrative autonomy. Now, regulatory framework and legalities. Uh, this concerns uh, issuance of small-scale mining contracts two projects even before the Minan Bayan area covering the project site have not yet been declared. Issue number seven, leakages. Now, this concerns loss of income to government due to under-declaration, misdeclaration, and undervaluation of mineral or metal products. 
environmental issues and concern. Now, this issue concerns the continued use of banned chemicals and lack of guidelines on design and construction of appropriate environmental structures uh, to treat mine or mill waste, such as tailings storage facilities on a small scale. Now we have community-related concerns. This, these are uh, an example of this issue, is the influx of miners from other provinces uh, competing with local workers. Now, last, uh, we have traders, black market versus the Banco Central and Filipina. This is primarily uh, the selling and buying of produce. That, that are undetected by government. So where to go from here? Now we, 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 we can categorize our directions with the four. Formalization, policy augmentation, policy implementation and enforcement, and the position of uh, imposition or decongestion of regulatory bottom. First, formalization. We need to make small-scale mining an acknowledged and acceptable occupation in communities or provinces where small-scale mining is truly really technically and economically feasible. So we need to know how to gather and need, uh, gather the needed data in the most comprehensive, systematic way possible. We need to have firmer basis on how to resolve pervasive informality. A national research plan has to be designed and implemented to this end. We need to have a complete profile and inventory of the sector. We need to know its players, stakeholders, degree of influence to minors, welfare, and have a full understanding of informality. Also in parallel, continuing to fast track the processing of Minambayan applications will hasten the formalization process. Second, policy augmentation. We need to clarify uh, terminologies and redefine sector types, scale, and coverage. We need to redefine equipment use and investment threshold. We need to redefine classification based on commodities and processing byproducts. We need to clarify on what kind of clearances are required by the DNR secretary. And we need to harmonize regulatory structures. Thirdly, policy implementation and enforcement. We need enhancement and strict implementation of the People's Small Scale Mining Program, as indicated in RA 7076, specifically according to the plans and programs committed as a small scale mining contractor, such as the annual safety and health program, the community development management programs, and the like. Implementation of the related uh, complementary policy, uh, like the Indigenous Peoples uh, Rights Act, the regulation of contraband, the National Integrated Protected Area System Act, the Forest Code, the Local Government Code. Now, we uh, we need a non-implementation of obsolete conflicting policy. And we can identify these uh, in the 16 laws. Now, recognition of the primacy of RA 7076, given due respect to policy hierarchy. So we have the Constitution, then the Republic Act, then the executive orders, then the Department Administrative administrative orders, then the memorandum circulars, etc. Uh, we need to clarify transparency, transparency of benefit sharing agreements. 
in relation to taxes, royalties, land lease between mining associations, landlords, LGUs, and miners. We need to create partnership templates with large-scale mining companies. We need to adjust and impose higher penalties for violators. We need to clarify the fines to include financiers and officials of small-scale mining groups, such as cooperatives, associations, regardless of operational template or internal arrangement. And we need to instill accountability. Fourthly, uh, imposition or decongestion of regulatory battle. Now, we can classify this in terms of inputs, operations, and markets. In terms of inputs, we need to redefine thresholds for chemicals and explosive regulations amidst any new small-scale mining uh, definition, definitions of scale and types. Uh, in definitions of small-scale mining activity. We need to strengthen manpower regulation, security for wage earners or, or common laborers. We need to redefine uh, thresholds for capital and machinery. We need to clarify penurial instruments as mining patterns. Now, we need to rethink Sequence of documentary requirements as FPIC, ECC, LGU permits. Uh, ECC should be prior to DNR Secretary School. We need a uh, provision of support for less prohibited, uh, less prohibited access to credit. Uh, we need to mobilize government-owned financial institutions to act as mineral banks. For example, now in terms of operations, there is a need to institute, institutionalize and standardize uh, frequent monitoring and effective enforcement. Uh, we need to streamline processing plant accreditation, and we need to duplicate government support templates, such as the GOST funded processing plan. We need to be specific on local government oversight functions and roles. Remove vagueness in Minambayan declarations, locally and nationally declared. We need to roll out more effective tools and plans in monitoring material movement. We need to recommend better templates for sharing and compensation among miners and other actors. We need to assure environmental compliance and disaster risk management, as tailings management, uh, mine structural safety and integrity assurance, downstream uh, protection. And we need to address uh, the question of liability. Now, in terms of markets, uh, the issue of the black market is not just a market acquisition by the BSP, uh, but also how the government cracks down on such illegal players. Now, increasing the number of credited buyers for all types of precious metals and minerals must be given due effort. Seems improving uh, the Bureau of Customs uh, capacity and capability to minimize smuggling includes strengthening partnerships with select sector stakeholders. We need supply chain support from government, which may improve material movement and monitoring. Value adding and uh, ancillary industry development support must be provided by government to prevent unwanted leakages, such as gold laundering. After setting the course of direction, 
We are now into answering the third and last critical question of the study. How to get there. Now, in the next final four slides, we shall cover our recommendations for a national research plan, roadmap, and implementation strategy. An immediate need is a national research plan. Strategies uh, to develop and or improve current situations need to be based on facts. We must be uh, reminded that we cannot improve what we cannot measure. Thus, data sets, metrics must be agreed upon and a plan is needed on what or how to obtain such data and measure such, such metrics. A national research plan uh, can be guided by objectives that can provide a suggested approach for collecting and analyzing socioeconomic data regarding the Philippine small scale mining sector. Now, the proposed research topics based on a 2018 uh, document published by the United Nations uh, Inst Institute for Training and Research uh, have nine main categories. We have demographic information. So these are the contents of a national research plan, the categories of data sets that are needed. And we need information and formality. Local government power dynamics, gold and mercury trade, Mercury use, local development, women's role, children's role, and health information. Second, we need roadmaps. Several, several interrelated roadmaps as there are unique challenges for a geographical area. Strategies may also be formulated even per region. Now, the approach will depend on the analysis of findings and, out and outputs for the National Research Plan. Now, it is, uh, it is expected that there will be several uh, key result areas or directions to take. Now, this list, of course, is not uh, as comprehensive as we want them to. Now, road mapping is a collective activity, so we leave it to the designated uh, task forces to, to complete the list. Uh, there have been announcements uh, made on small-scale mining roadmap. It may, be a, it may be a mistake not to break down such roadmap into more manageable constituent roadmaps and strategies. Uh, the challenge here is how to coordinate uh, every, every activity uh, from a single office uh, that can champion SSM development. Last slide. Now, uh, implementation strategies. So, should stakeholder buy-in, and this is very important, uh, even during road mapping, uh, you need stakeholder buy-in. Uh, road maps, uh, again, is a collective activity. You should need, uh, you, should, you should have uh, as many stakeholders as possible during road mapping exercise. Uh, once stakeholder buy-in is obtained, uh, all throughout the road mapping and strategy formulation stages, implementation must roll out successfully. Uh, the main challenge would be building capacities. LGUs, MGB, uh, all other uh, government agencies. Now, implementation and coordination within multiple execution areas is not a uh, easy thing to do. And we need to continuously monitor progress, assess performance, react to results, and craft 
uh, and implement sounder strategies to continuously improve the uh, eventual overall performance of the sector. Uh, this will be a cycle. Thus, the SSM Development Office, we recommend one, or uh, we call that office the champion, would need to act as a competent project management office, uh, doing major activities in a cycle. So, I guess, I guess uh, that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Over to you, uh, Sheila Gwen.